AIDS brings a response from the government. But is it enough to stop the spread of the world's newest and deadliest disease? We have a report. But first, the government is to spend nearly a million pounds on the fight against AIDS, the disease which attacks the body's immunity defence system. The Health Minister, Barney Hayhoe, says that from next month it's also hoped to screen all blood donations for the virus that causes the disease. More than 100 people, many of them homosexuals, have died of AIDS in Britain. Others, including haemophiliacs, are also at risk from contaminated blood. Mr Hayhoe said the number of new cases is bound to increase over the next few years. Today's announcement from the government means more than £600,000 will go to outpatient facilities and counselling services. £120,000 will go to the Haemophilia Society and hospital-based haemophiliac centres. £100,000 will be spent on a publicity campaign to raise awareness about AIDS. And £10,000 will be given to the Terence Higgins Trust, a counselling service for homosexuals with the disease. Today's developments here are just part of a growing worldwide concern about the killer disease. In America, an opinion poll today ranks AIDS along with cancer as the country's most serious health problem. Two out of, I beg your pardon, two out of three people say they fear getting AIDS from blood transfusions. In Switzerland, a conference of medical experts on the disease said avoiding sexual promiscuity was the best strategy against the virus. And even from China, there's news today of moves to set up an AIDS research centre to guard against an invasion of the virus there. Already the Chinese have banned all imports of foreign blood products. The financial support announced by the government here has already been welcomed by some doctors involved in the fight against AIDS, but as Lawrence McGinty reports, some experts say it's just not enough. This is the ward where AIDS patients are treated at St Mary's Hospital in London, one of three centres that cares for almost all British AIDS victims. Medical staff here are delighted by today's announcement that the government is to give an extra million pounds to boost their fight against the disease. They say caring for patients with AIDS is a labour-intensive business and current health authority budgets won't stretch to pay for the nurses to tend patients or the counselling staff to advise them. The health department admits that although there have been only 206 cases of AIDS in Britain, the number of new cases is bound to increase. There are various applications were put up by the regions and within reason I think that uh, the DHSS has given us more or less what we wanted initially. I've only been in my present job what, uh, under a month mm -hmm. uh, and this was certainly one of the matters which was very high on my desk and the very fact I've been uh, speaking as I have today and announcing uh, this allocation of extra resources is an indication of the high priority I give it. Yes, I, I think that this is a very serious disease. Uh, the infection is one uh, which is spreading and we must take uh, all practical steps to s reduce the spread of that infection. What would you say to those people who might say that a million pounds is too little and too late? I think that what we are doing is an effective uh, uh, response to the problem as at present time uh, is, it is being assessed. and. Uh, in these circumstances, of course, the matters will be kept under review. Mr Hayhoe also announced today that from the 14th of October, blood given for transfusions will be tested for the presence of the AIDS virus. This is the route of infection that affects haemophiliacs. Although welcoming the new screening test, the Haemophilia Society is not satisfied that the government is giving enough cash to help haemophiliacs. The money earmarked for haemophilia is <clears throat> well we're very grateful of that which has come directly to the society we are worried though that the 90,000 that has been allocated for counseling services in haemophilia reference centers is a one-off payment and uh, it's difficult to see how that's going to enable those places to employ full-time counselors which is what the we think is required Mr. Hayhoe also made it clear today that when the AIDS screening test is introduced, the government will not give the health authorities extra funds for the two million tests a year that will be needed. The authorities were advised about the need to carry out this testing earlier in this year, and I hope that provision will have been made within their own resource allocation 
Uh, it's important that we get this testing uh, in place, and I hope on all the indications that I have at the moment that we will uh, be able to start the blood testing in the middle of October. Of course, when we discover people who are infected, then they need counselling because, as we've said, if they go on, unfortunately, to contract the disease itself, there is at the moment no known cure. And that really is one of the, the, the gravest aspects of these problems. Does that mean that you would consider ideas such as a, a central register of infected um, people? In a, <coughs> if you can't cure it, yeah. surely you must make if, every attempt to limit it. If I, if I was convinced that a central register would reduce the effective spread of this infection, of course I would consider it. But the advice I have at the moment is such a central register, <coughs> or even plans to establish it, would probably have the effect of driving uh, these matters underground uh, which would then perhaps even have just the reverse effect of the infection spreading even faster as a result. And pounds into the fight against the spread of the disease, AIDS. Earlier in the program, incidentally, we said that the Terence Higgins Trust was a voluntary organisation that advises homosexuals with AIDS. The Trust has asked us to point out that they help all AIDS patients. That's Channel 4 News. Good evening. <laughs>